So here we are, together with actress at Ali Pali Studios of Hepcat Radio Show, and um, actress. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for coming. Finally, we made it happen. So I'm, I'm just traveling up from South London, isn't it? So it's quite a long, it's quite a long trip traveling. But yeah, it's cool. Thanks for me. You know, uh, back in 2008, I think really like November or something like that, I was still living in Amsterdam and um, my colleague brought into the office of Kindred Spirits your album and uh, it totally, totally blew me away. That album actually really made me uh, uh, like a second awakening in, in music for me. I completely re fell in love with music. So that is why I am very honored to have you over because <laughs> Uh, it actually was the first time I heard about work discs. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself and even way back the history, how did all started for you and where are you coming from musically? 
think it's um, it's the same for uh, most small um, small record labels and how they start. It kind of starts with friends, really. Um, well, I think that's kind of how it starts, at least. The, um, I don't know the the kind of the the, the kind of buzz and the enthusiast the enthusiasm for like starting something new. I think starts um, with your friends, with people that you've met maybe. And um, yeah, it's really it started out of myself and um, a really good friend of mine, Gavin Will. Um, f- firstly, starting wanting to start um, um, a night and um, getting together and you know just finding a small venue in in South East London, Camberwell called Funky Monkey. A really small venue, about 100 capacity or something like that. And um, just doing uh, doing something that wasn't happening at the time, which we felt was um, a night which wasn't catering to one specific music, whether it was, um, you know, we were getting fed up with going to nights where it was just playing techno all night or, or nights that were just playing electro all night or just getting fed up with just that kind of one way attitude of just playing music we wanted to have variation um and it was also around the time where you know there was a lot of interest in electronic music coming through and i think the, the first guest that we that we booked for the night was um, a guy called Silob who's uh who was signed to reflex at the time i think it was um so yeah, we invited him down to to, to do a live set, and, uh, and then it was just me and Gav just um, playing weird music all night, you know. Um, but I, I don't think the intention was always not to have it to be like really po-faced and and like just like men with beards, just kind of staring at the turntable, kind of like not dancing or anything like that, or no girls or anything like that, you know what I mean? So. Um, we wanted something which had a nice vibe which had girls which had people just dancing to weird music I think that's how it started um, and we did that for uh, for about a year probably each one just 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 really successful you know it was pretty clear at the time that this was something that people wanted um, or at least had you know had, have the option to go to it was cheap you know we weren't you know, we're only charging three pound on the door or something like that. So, um, so straight away we just kind of created quite a nice, um, a nice buzz um, around the name. Um, but yeah, fundamentally, um, the label started with friends, mm-hmm. just talking about different ideas. Yeah. How long ago? Oh, I think the first night was like in 2002. Um, so yeah, you're talking about eight years ago now. So. Yeah, quite a while ago, um, and then the the label really it was something that we all wanted to go into. You know, there was a, f- a few of us who were making making music, and we did like a. Um, we, I think we had a boat party. We were doing a lot of boat parties at that point, and I think we collectively got together and wrote tracks. Um, did a, a kind of one hundred run CD press, which we just gave away in the night. And um, so that really was the start of, 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 of work discs as it is today, really, starting with Friends, uh, a compilation written by Friends. Um, and then, yeah, out of that, just kind of taking it to the next level. Um, being really naive about it, actually, just kind of looking what distributors were out there, you know, confronted with the problem of well how do you finance something like this you've never done it before um you talk to other people who may have started a record label at the time so you get an idea of at least how to start um and then we just started approaching different distributors just saying this is what we've this is what we've done um this is what we'd like to do um wrote up a proposal about it kind of a general vision of how we could see things um, evolving. Again, still really naive, no real kind of massive ambitions as such, other than just to kind of get music onto vinyl. Um, 
and uh, yeah, we 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 uh, our first deal really um, was was with a with a distributor in Manchester called Baked Goods, um, and um, we had a really good relationship with them. They really kind of helped us um, set up, you know, the foundations were pretty much set at um, at Baked Goods. Um, so. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where that's where the, the the output of records started to come from, at least anyway. Um, as you were a London guy, uh, for me, you know, from the uh, late nineties, uh, early two thousand, I discovered uh, reinforced records uh, from the London sound that really inspired me. What uh, music you were inspired by that time when you were starting up? Uh, like all your music business um well i'm from wolves which is um in the midlands mm -hmm. and um i think at that time when i was discovering music myself i was quite a big really into my kind of happy hardcore and stuff like that i don't mean like really yeah, yeah. bouncy stupid happy hardcore but like stuff like, like sped up Yeah. Like vocals and cheesy pianos, I just loved it. You know what I mean? I can't get enough of that stuff. Even now, I love it. Um, Reinforced and Jungle probably came a little bit later, to be honest with you, because I went on this kind of. I think I went to this festival called um, Tribal Gathering, which really opened my eyes to to what to electronic music and what was going on out there. And up until that point, I, I knew nothing really about Detroit techno or anything like that I was still really naive about it and um, I just remember um, going to this festival with my with my mates in my little fiesta uh, uh, yeah driving up to Luton Who um, and just you know just kind of being wide eyed like pulled over in, in like this this grass bank and you've got all these ravers and I think the tune at the time was Super Sharp Shooters mm -hmm. um, DJ Hype and this was getting rinsed and we were like, so this was this was like probably my first like okay it's a bit of jungle going on here and I think I'd already penned down the acts I wanted to see um, I, you know Daft Punk were playing live Kraftwerk were playing Jeff Mills Derek May um, but then kind of saw Ronnie Size played live, which was really cool. DJ Hype, um, Adam F, <laughs> and his live band, which was yeah a bit funny at the time, but yeah, it was quite good. Um, uh, and yeah, just 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 being blown away really by just just ravers in general. You know what I mean? Just like just having a lot of fun and just walking around really wide-eyed and just like. I kind of, you know, I want to get in, I want to get involved in this, I want to kind of see where it leads and up until that point I'd not been like, I wasn't producing or anything like that, yeah. you know, I was, I don't know, with music I've always, I've, you know, I've got quite a large family so I'm, I've, I'm quite rooted in terms of like um, everything from reggae, R&B, <clears throat> funk, soul, all that and um, but I, was, I could certainly feel myself going on to this kind of discovery of, of really wanting to see see wanting to see what was out there um, and I left that festival basically and just got back to Wolves went to the went to the record store and says right I've just been to this festival these are the guys that I heard can you recommend me some records and uh, yeah he just pulled out some records for me slapped them on the table and was, you know, amongst them was like Jeff Mills and um, I don't know, like kind of maybe like early Marco Carolla stuff like that, quite shuffly kind of techno stuff. Um, Kevin Saunderson was amongst um, amongst that as well. So really, I was kind of guided by somebody who kind of had a bit of an idea of where I might want to go. And uh, yeah, once I once I learned about those records, I kind of. Was obviously buying magazines at the time. I was reading a lot of mix mag and music magazine at that time, DJ magazine. And I think naturally you just pick up a sense of what it is you're 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 
you're gonna like and um, me being me I'm just gonna discover as much as I possibly can so I ended up spending a lot of time hard to find records in Birmingham which at the time was in this in this um, kind of office block you know what I mean you walk up like three floors you can come to this office block and the first office that they had it was just literally like a library just 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 a library of records some were in sleeves some were white labels some were like deleted never to be seen again but we were just there and you're just kind of going through all these names and you're like seeing Boo Williams Fast Eddie you know um, Mr Fingers Larry Hurd um, Kenny Larkin um and really, you, you, the path set. Then you just kind of just keep discovering. You keep picking up. You, and that's it. You know. I was also um, collecting records uh, from a long time ago, and for me, it was also exactly the same path of uh, searching for records and also looking up the sleeves of the producers, co-producers, you know, stuff like that. Because there was no such thing as internet or MySpace and stuff like that. So it's quite uh, of a big change now, chasing up empty trees. And I, I wonder sometimes, like, how is the new generation, like, totally different mind state of learning about music. So what did you play as a first track? And maybe let's hear uh, something else and then we'll be back on uh, the microphone after another tune. Um, the, f- the first track that I played was, was by a group called Eye Level. And it's called Number Four. Um, I've, and to be honest with you, I only picked up on them recently, um, but I, I like that track because it's just the right balance between uh, dub, punk, R&B. It's got just, just a real nice, simple groove to it, you know what I mean? And I like tracks like that. Um, and I suppose um, when it comes to like selecting records, I mean, I'm at a stage now where I'm obviously looking for for um for records that are just uh, either records that are gems or, or kind of just hidden just hidden records that um that aren't getting played at the moment but are probably just as relevant as records that are getting played right now um in terms of what i've got today i've bought a selection of of, of records which um some records which are being considered for release on on, on work discs and um, a couple of tracks from the album that I've got upcoming on Honest John's records mm-hmm. um, and I think that's about it really um, I've bought a few records some records that mean you know mean quite a bit to me on vinyl so I'll have to um, no doubt I'll be pulling some of those out at some point but um I think I think the next record, uh, the next track that I'm going to play is um, by somebody I'm looking at right now. Um, uh, difficult to describe, really. It's quite <laughs> quite weirdly spiritual in in a, in a kind of in a kind of weird way. But you know, again, it's it's kind of. So it's quite a meditative track I, I quite like basically and it kind of sums up um, what I'm looking to get out of the label really in terms of just a, a good um, a good blend a good glow of tracks which kind of work together with the artists that we've that we've brought through so far um, so yeah I'll just like play that
This is sounding amazing so far. So still talking about um, the there is a new package, the records and um, the whole uh, old school way of looking at and right now making music on the computer. Uh, th- are you actually making music on the computer or do you use a lot of synthesizers and hardware and trying to buy, you know, old school gear to make stuff? I think the cent- central unit is, is, the, is the computer. But I started out on using hardware. Um, I try and use a good mixture of the two. Really, I try not. To, I don't really make music specifically off the computer. Like I couldn't. I couldn't be in a hotel room making music. It just isn't like that for me. Um, so I'm surrounded by a mixture of old um, and look gear um, and just general kind of software programs, which help me to manipulate sounds and turn it into something that it that it wasn't originally and yeah that's that's it really and also DJing you are I see you brought a lot of vinyl so you are a vinyl DJ more than a Serato or an MPG person <laughs> I don't use Serato at all um yeah I still carry my box around really and it's a nightmare but the box has been with me for a long time now so I don't really mind lugging it around, but yeah, I'm still very much vinyl. I don't, I don't know how to operate a CDJ or anything like that. Um, I have played off Serato a few times, but to be honest with you, I'm much of it. I'm, I'm still a vinyl buyer, you know. I love buying records. Um, they mean, they just mean, they just mean more. To be honest with you, it's like buying a book for me. Um, you get everything with it. You get to read where it's come from. Um, it's there, you know. You can physically hold it. Um, you can physically move it, you know. If it gets mashed up, it gets mashed up. Go and buy another one, you know. If you, <laughs> I left, I left, uh, I left like a Lil Lewis record recently by the Radiator. Like, um, well, it's not too bad because I can't. Which frequency it's called, and it's quite a warped out track anyway. But it's just more warped out now, so I'm still going to play it. You know what I mean? It's just going to be more warped out. Um, so yeah, you know, if those things happen and more fool me but or just go and look for it again or something like that but I don't know it's worth about 50 quid or something like that but um, yeah I'm still very much vinyl so let's talk about uh, work discs how did you uh, all, how the whole label involved and how did you meet uh, uh, all the people that uh, are now signed on your label signed or you know like records you released like Zombie for example and Luke It um, generally, music that has been released on work has been via recommendations. So either someone's heard something and sent me an A track, um, and then you can't. And for me, I kind of make, firstly, whether I like it or not, try and make a, some kind of assessment of whether it fits in with where you want to go with the record label. I don't know, I try, we don't have a large roster really and and that's kind of intentional because I like to see, I think it's important to see progression within artists, I don't really believe in just dropping tracks here and there, you know, obviously if you're working with established artists then that makes a lot of sense, but for me I've always been kind of more... um, more likely to kind of look at artists who are looking to forge a, a, some kind of career in music, you know. Um, and in the case of artists like Lou Kids, then yeah, it was a, it was a question of someone sent me a track. Um, I liked 
what what he was trying to do. It may not quite have been there yet, but you could. It was pretty obvious to me at the time that there was something there worth pursuing. Um, and then after that point, it's kind of you know making an introduction to the artist and um, um, seeing what they're all about, seeing what how they view music in generally, where you know where they've come from, where they're looking to go. Um, try and explain as much as possible what I'm about as a person, what what the label's about, and and really that's it. It's like it's kind of a house, you know. It's it's a family. That's kind of how I look at how I look at the label, and um, I think that's been proven in that you know Luke's now on his he's just you know recently released his second album Foma, and now you know going on into you know. Um, music that's been synced to um, commercials and stuff like that which is all really you know it's really good so seeing an artist develop from that point is really important really important for me yeah are you like uh, uh, specifically uh, invest your energy in uh, chasing the new level of music you know commercials and getting everyone's profiles or, or are you more like of a person who just underground flow let it all evolve and blossom by itself I think if you're signing good music I think generally the glow of the music will actually draw um, draw people towards it um, <clears throat> whether that's the general audience who are going to go out and buy the record or whether that's from maybe from, from a, a corporate angle where people actually want to um, use the music to represent something um generally underground that's kind of where i'm from um but at the end of the day you know it's it's about getting the the music out there as so long as it's um matched with the right people um then yeah I've, yeah definitely looking for angles where the where the music can be placed in, 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 in different ways you know i don't think I, i'm not really into kind of um the idea that an artist should solely look to um, benefit from just releasing records. Um, I think it's good. I think I think that's that's kind of fundamentally what you get into it for in the first place. But I think really, you know, I'd, I'd like to see artists then go on to maybe produce bands. Um, obviously, going on to do do remixes and. Um, and seeing their music being used for really cool videos or stuff like that. So yeah, that the bigger picture, yeah, that's that I think that is quite important. What format are you selling work disc releases? Uh, vinyl, CD, MP3s, right? Yeah, all formats at the moment. Um, obviously, primarily started out as doing vinyls. As a pattern, the label has shifted more towards doing. Um, album projects um, and and that wasn't really it wasn't it wasn't it, it wasn't intentional in that in that we just wanted to put out CD albums it was a question that we wanted an artist to to be able to um, present a sound and I think you can only really present a sound by doing albums that's my that's my honest viewpoint um, I think vinyl's good, but I think in in the current climate and, in, and for, for the amount that it costs to actually press vinyl, I think it's really important that if you are going to go to vinyl nowadays, that you have records that are, are really going to work um, on the dance floor, or you produce um, I don't know a tr double pack or triple pack vinyl which is collectible. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the way that I look at things at the moment. But in terms of availability of work records, you can find work records on, on vinyl, CD, MP3s. Yeah. Uh, what next are you going to play for us? Well, what shall I play next? Um, I'm going to play uh, a track by uh, another new artist actually I don't know what to make of this person actually I think it's someone who's just pulling my leg to be honest with you but um, he's, he sent it to me and uh, 
I think it's pretty cool to be honest with you. I'm going to play one track which includes vocals and 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 it'll run into another track which is basically just the instrumental.
Social, together with actress Work This and myself, Mami Komoto. And you know, actress, I also, what I really like about your label is the artwork. I think it's so important, you know, to put out something instead of putting like a brown paper sleeve or black sleeve, you know. Uh, so it would be nice to know who is doing your artwork and like what's your view about it all because obviously it's important to you because the artwork is great. Um, well, right at the very start, the, we we um, we wanted to make sure that everything from 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 the looking at the the products to the actual listening to the product was was good and um, initially it was um, a, a, a girl called uh, Tanya Paget who did our artwork and um, she really started the, the, the real bold um, look of the label like from from the original design of um, of, of the logo and, and the actual uh, typography of the of the actual um, work discs label um, and I think at the start we had a very clear idea that we wanted it to be quite Germanic, quite simple looking, um, but, but quite striking. Um, so yeah, Tanya designed the first few um, uh, records and then once we designed Lou Kids, um, we started to work with um, a designer called Davin Gormley. Um, who works really closely with um, with Luke in terms of uh, um, coming up with a vision of, of, of his of his um, his logo and um, the shapes that we that we attach to his particular sound. Um, and really, after after designing the Luke it sleeves, it kind of um, progressed into doing my artwork. Um, and then it was just Davin who's d- d- designing our sleeves then, designing the, all the artwork for for um, for work. And um, if we were doing parties, then 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 Dav would um, be doing you know the sleeves. And it would all he would always really closely tie it to to the records. So you know it was always quite consistent. Whether it was records, whether it was flyers, whether it was posters, whether it was some you know whether if you saw something in a magazine or something like that, it was always consistent to. To, to how our products looked on the shelves, um, and each artist in their own right had artwork which, you know, if you, if you laid it out, it would all make sense basically. So, so yeah, Davin really for the since I think it is about since I think it was about 2005 or 2006 for a good, um, you know, a good three and a half years, he um, he, he did our uh, did our artwork. Um, Unfortunately, um, and sadly, Davin uh, passed away um, just before just before Christmas, um, which obviously was um, uh, quite a difficult time for for everyone involved in, in in the label. But at the same time, it it was it was something that we feel massively privileged. Really, I mean, he designed our website as well, which is just. <laughs> Just an amazing website, and um, that's all his work, really. You know, I think we were fortunate enough to to meet somebody who could translate um, collectively what was going on in our, in our heads as musicians, and actually translate that from an actual visual um, standpoint. Um, so uh, it's a big loss for the label. Um, uh, I mean, his his motto was always to keep it, keep it simple, basically. Um, so I think what you'll find is that you know we, we've also worked with other designers in the past, and we also have a designer who is going to be um, doing the next generation of sleeves, and whatnot. But generally, I think um, his 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 ethos and his legacy has been left with the label. So it's it's very clear to me how the next generation of artists um, sleeves will, will will look. And um, 
so yeah, that's I, I, to be honest with you, the the look of the label from from about 2006 onwards is all down to Davin really, um, and I think his impact from a visual um, perspective uh, has, has is reflected in 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 the comments and the emails that I get from people asking just like who does this artwork kind of thing. Yeah, he's pretty pretty special, pretty special guy, pretty talented guy, and uh, yes. Um, uh, a sad loss really for us yeah what the sound is always so dirty you know so <laughs> in a way old school so underground you know uh, what's uh, the deal with the pressing is it like the, the it, does it take the big importance for you how your record sound and uh, who is doing your pressing um well, we have a we have a relationship with with distributors in terms, of, which means that they generally um, sort out the manufacturing for us. I'll choose who we want to go to for for mastering and stuff like that. We generally use um, we've used a selection actually. We've used Transition for for, for different things. Jason at Transition, South East London, who is um, pretty well known for doing a lot of the um, dubstep plates um, we've also in, in the past used um, DNM mastering out in Berlin they do a really good job as well um, so it really kind of in terms of mastering it kind of bounces between those two Th- yeah those those two guys really so um, but yeah in terms of the in terms of the sad I think um, I think generally um, the artists that we have are, are, are technically actually quite good at, at, at bringing a really decent sound anyway so the, the back end of it at, at mastering stage I don't think is ever a massive problem it's just um, yeah just just that's it really um, I don't I don't really I just leave it up to them really I don't get too involved from that point of view for me it's just about finding the music and then passing it on to the experts um, and then giving them enough respect to kind of yeah do their thing and you know and and yeah that's it really let's hear some more music okay i'm gonna play something um by um an artist that we've signed recently um by loan um who just released uh, an album called um Ecstasy, ecstasy and friends which is doing really well at the moment um, we've got planned a 12 inch from him which goes com- completely in the opposite direction and, you know it's not hip hop at all it's always not hip hop there's no hip hop template there at all it's basically going straight for for um, new house man he's just like kind of just really fresh and um, a lot of buzz going on at the moment about a lot of the tracks that he's writing at the moment so I think it's going to be quite exciting when he's you know when his tracks actually get on to get on to press and um, I'm probably going to play two tracks by him but the first one is called uh, Raptured uh, which is one of my favourite tracks out of his most recent you know when I heard his album I was like yes okay and then I heard his newer tracks like uh, once in a while and so I was totally blown away by it I also totally agree with you I think it's like the future is gonna come interesting here okay let's hear it Let's 
was that? That track was by uh, um, Instrumental, um, who uh, have been making massive ra- waves recently um, on their own non-plus label, but also f- um, through their podcasts and um, live shows on Rinse FM. Um, and yeah, we've um, we hooked up. I hooked up with them um, quite recently. Really, kind of. Um, really nice to me actually in terms of my material and um, so we did a little swap I've given them something that's going to be coming out on Nonplus quite soon as well Um, so yeah that track is something that's going to be coming out on Work This which is just a kind of little little relationship that we got going on with Instrumental and uh, and the Nonplus label so yeah people should definitely check out for them let's talk about you since your uh, Hazelville album uh, you Uh, done uh, an amazing remix I really enjoyed uh, from Trump Trago uh, Lost remix and some other remixes like Joy Orbison recently right and um, yeah just tell me about what you've been doing recently like producing stuff and you also prepared a new album right for Honest Jones like let's catch up yeah um, obviously my own writer I'm producer and, and writer myself um, Hazyville in itself was something that was written over I don't know something stupid like four months four years what I'm talking about for four months I wish it was four months um, four months yeah stupid I know um, but um, obviously during that time running the record label you know I try and find as much time as I possibly can for myself but um, I've got something coming up on Honest John's, uh, which is called Splash, um, and that will be coming out, I think, early May, um, early spring, early May, somewhere around there. Um, it'll be kind of before that, it'll be a, a 12 inch with um, uh, called Paint, Straw, and Bubbles, um, and on that will be uh, a remix by um, Mr. Zombie. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, that album. Like, I don't know, it's quite a few tracks on there, and it's just it's called Splash because it's just an absolute. There's no real. Whereas Hazyville was very programmed in terms of how the general sound of it was going to sound. This one's a lot more deconstructed and a lot more kind of variation. And it's kind of. I wouldn't say all over the place, but it's it, it makes it should make sense anyway. It's you know it's just basically all my influences just totally condensed down into into this sound basically. So um, yeah, I'll probably play one or two tracks off off as well. The question that I also a long time wanted to ask you, like actress is such an unbelievably nice name. Where how did you come up with it? 
I've been asked this a lot recently and to be honest with you, I can't even remember how it was conceived but I can only think that it was after some mad night at six o'clock in the morning where you know you've got beer cans all over the place wraps all over the place all sorts of misbehaviour going on and and, and what not and uh, I don't know uh, that's just just, just like the name is stuck, you know. I wouldn't say I'm a diva in in any ways. Other people may may say differently, but um, yeah, just a, just a name that stuck really. It may even have been given to me. I'm not even too sure to be honest with you. But it is, yeah, there's a theatrical aspect to it, I suppose. You have been doing quite a lot of international uh, tour dates recently and um, uh, doing uh, live gigs and fabric and uh, all over UK. Uh, is there any uh, upcoming tours that uh, it would be interesting, or, like you know, gig dates uh, for us to know uh, in the nearer time? And are you planning to do like an album tour? Um. Maybe, not too sure. I kind of take things step by step, really. Obviously, I've got somebody who takes care of all that stuff for me. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm reluctant to kind of um, go out and do a tour or anything like that. It's, it's not, you know, it's, it's something I enjoy doing, um, but because of the way that I write my music because of the way that I perform it as well. I don't just kind of sit there and press play or anything like that. A lot of it is kind of improvised um, along the way. So, you know, it's, it's, it's beforehand, I find it quite stressful putting it all together and stuff. But um, I'm going to be doing a few things. Um, I'm going to be playing at Mutech Festival out in Canada in, in June, uh, which will be a, a, a kind of a, a main um, album um, presentation showcase, whatever you want to call it. So I hear, yep. Um, uh, and then there's a few things like going to be out in Milan quite soon. Um, and maybe a couple of things in London coming up quite soon. I think I'm supporting um, Fortet at... Um, um, at East Village or something like that, but yeah, I mean, dates will be uploaded, and I'm sure they'll they'll increase over as as the album release uh, approaches. Yeah, so for everybody who um, may be here for the first time, uh, where can uh, they find your updates? What's your your URL for the website and the blog? Are you still using MySpace and stuff? My space is, well, for me, it's a bit dead out to be honest with you. I don't, up, I only update dates to it. I don't really update tracks to it as such. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out about dates, um, keep checking like Twitter, like, twitter.com work this forward slash work discs. Um, I am on MySpace, um, which is actress um, KHZ, actress Kilohertz. Um, and yeah, you can go to our website. You, you'll find out, man. It's like uh, workdiscs.com. We're, we're there. We're visible. I mean, we don't really make a big deal of it or anything. I'll post up nonsense up on Twitter every now and again. But, um, you know, yeah, you'll, you'll find out, basically. Okay, so I'm curious to hear some new new stuff from your upcoming album, Splash, coming out soon on Honest Chants. Yeah, I think I'm going to go in quite hard on this one. This um, this one's called Wrong Potion, which um, I suppose that it's, it's based around just kind of... I don't know, it's it's very difficult to describe how it is that I make music. You know, it's it's quite a full-on experience. Like, I literally just... I'm quite happy-go-lucky kind of thing, you know what I mean? I'm always jumping all over the place or just kind of hunched over my laptop or just kind of banging on a key or something like that and then something kind of happens. There's no real kind of... I just, I just write it, you know what I mean? But yeah, this is called Wrong Potion and it's... I suppose it's just something to do with dropping something that ain't, didn't quite go right and it's just like... and that's the repercussions of it, really, if you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, Wrong Potion. Yeah. 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 
preview of the upcoming album from actress on Honest Johns. Sounding really, really nice. And there, I heard there's going to be 17 tracks. That's quite a lot. I think that's a bit of a slap in the face for taking so long with Hazyville, to be honest with you. Just piss out a few records, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, 17 tracks. Again, you know, I, I, think, I, I don't think there's any tracks that are massive in length or anything like that. There's a few that go on for a little bit, but um, but yeah, generally I just wanted to just to, just to get them out there really um, and not sit on sit on too many tracks, which I have done previously. Really, just get out there and just move just move on to the next thing. Really, uh, what's next also for your label now that you've done the album for Honest Johns? By the way, how did you? hook up how come honest johns it's a great label great record shop in london it's great uh, combo of uh, you doing a, an album for them and visa versa so i just how did you meet them um they contacted me off the back of hazeful again um there was a few um labels that wanted to do something um and they just seemed they just seemed to be the right label they they were they had the right um seemed to have the right attitude about what they want where they reckoned i should have should go with with the next thing and it was kind of in line with what i was thinking as well um and i wanted to experience um just just um being a and r actually actually not having to worry about um the project myself you know actually having actually trying to being able to trust um another label to actually um put it all together and organize and uh, and they seem to be the right label they you know um really nice bunch of people quite tight you know you get down to their record store in on portobello road in notting hill um really good record and uh, record shop um so yeah they they just contacted me and um and and you know asked me if I'd be interested and yeah that's that's where it went from there so what's next what's the future for actress in the upcoming 2010 well um like you said already there's a couple of remixes um something for Joy Orbison um a remix which should be coming out um in the next week or so actually um that's on house records aus um so yeah look out for that um i've got an ep um ready for non plus recordings which contains um a few tracks that i wrote i don't know about a couple of years ago to run this with you um so yeah they're they're coming out and they're, they're a lot darker to to um to, to, to material that I've written before. Um again really different to, to stuff that's on Hazyville and, and stuff that's on, on Splash. Um what else is there? Other things, you know, there's just there's just other things going on at the moment. It's nothing really that I can talk too much about at the moment. Um I don't know, I prefer to kind of generally prefer to be in the background really and not talk too much about what's going on. So um but yeah there's there's stuff upcoming. Thank you. 
all sounds really 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 nice and um, so what uh, are the upcoming things for work uh, loan uh, obviously and uh, other projects um yeah we've got um 12 12 inch coming out from nine which is just to, um as a as a kind of um offshoot of uh, ecstasy and friends really just not just opposite up uh, opposite a notch um as I said before, we've got material coming out from instrumental. Um, there's a few things which um, are kind of at de- development stage, um, stuff which I can't really talk too much about, but has been played tonight. Um, there's material from um, myself. I'll be doing uh, a couple of twelves. So I'm not quite sure when that will happen. Um, there's a triple pack. Um, Final version of uh, FOMA by Luke, in, which is actually called Chord, uh, and the reason being because there's like, loads of um, extra tracks which have been bunched in with that. Um, and yeah, that's you know really that's about it. I think uh, I always seem to f- find us at that point where there's stuff going out, but there's also stuff in you know heavily in development. So there'll be a couple of albums as well, um, but you'll probably start to see. Um, a lot more vinyl this year uh, as opposed to last year um, Where Were You In 92 by Zombie will, will reach vinyl, vinyl um, this year um, and Hazyville will also reach um, vinyl as well in a, in a um, in, 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 you know, in quite a nice collectible um, package um, and yeah that's, that's about as much as I can talk about right now What's happening with Zombie? Do you know? There are lots of mixed opinions, lots of mixed uh, uh, vibes going on. He doesn't show up at shows a lot of times. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. That's 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 up to I mean with the, where I come from on that one is that that is totally up to um, the artist what what he does you know um, I think first and foremost he's a producer and I think he's made that very clear um, right from the start to be honest with you he's first and foremost a, a producer um, and 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 kind of that's pretty much where it ends um, the, you know the material that he's 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 written kind of um, speaks for itself, really. You know, it's just heat, and uh, I think you know it's there's there's all there's a there's a lot of chat about all that kind of stuff, etc. But uh, to me, it's just not it it's just not really that important to be honest with you. As long as the music's right. Um, I think that is that's all that 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 matters to be honest with you. And if people want to keep talking, then and keep talking, you know, he's 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 here, he's there, he's everywhere, <laughs> you know, he's there. Um, so you know, that's 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 you know, that's just the way that it is, I suppose. Um, but you know, he's always writing, always always writing. So you'll see stuff come out, I'm sure. Um, in terms of in terms of stuff on 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 work, um, again, like I said, ninety two will be on vinyl. There'll be like a kind of special remix by I think everybody knows who's done a remix um, for him. There'll be a scream remix of, um, of floats which will surface at some point. Um, but yeah, you know, zombie is zombie, and that's I think that's it. 
know how people say like it doesn't matter what they are talking good or bad they are talking <laughs> it's important i think it's also like i admire that he is just being bold and just doing his thing and the music is sick to bucket bits <laughs> and um it's actually you know great let the man do what he does best you know so you were gonna play a couple of tracks by him or something like that you mentioned or um i'm gonna i'm gonna play a couple of tracks that i've um that i've received um by him um um in what kind of form they materialize who's to know to be honest with you but um i don't think i could uh, talk to you without playing uh, some of his material and you know night where united two was quite an important record for, for for the label and actually quite an important important record for um for, for the scene in general really you know really just take the piss with it you know and uh, obviously you've seen what it's done in terms of um it being used by lady gaga so you know it, it's it's reached a, a level which has far surpassed our expectations really um so yeah it's i think i think I just from 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 the artist point of view, I just don't think you can. It's very it's, the guy is going to be very hard to ignore. You know what I mean? And obviously he's got his work going on with Hyperdub and, and um, other record labels. And and yeah, he's he's here and yeah, he's just doing his bit. So I'm going to just play one track really, um, something that I'm really feeling at the moment. And, if there's something to come out of that then then I think it'll be pretty special again. So yeah, this is called such a feeling.
Terence Dixon, um, out of all the Detroit guys, um, more so because he was, um, you know, I think he's just when I heard his sound, it was just so, so ahead of its ahead of its time for me. Um, and um, people like Robert Hood, obviously, are, are people who I've um, really looked towards, and um, Moody Man. Um, Kenny Larkin. I tend to go for the the, the, the more the, the the more underrated uh, Detroit producers. So I mean that includes um, Shake Shakira as well, yeah. who's recently um, released records um, or re-released records via um, Russia. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. These guys were, were you know, heavily you know heavily influenced what what it was that I was doing. Um. I'm gonna play a track by Terence Dixon actually. Um, I hope it's the right one actually. I think it's called. Um, uh, uh, I think it's called Pilot Error. I think this is the right one, but I'll check now. Thank you. 
Yeah, so um, yeah, sorry it took me a little while to to find that track, but um, yeah, that's Terence Dixon, and uh, yeah, a guy who um, you should really check out what he's been up to. Um, he's released records on Metroplex, which is um, another label, which is um, a seminal Detroit label um, established by Juan Atkins, who's again another guy who I hold up in high high regard, um, and. You know, that's. I mean, really, he epitomises what it is that I'm that I'm into in terms of experimental um, electronic techno music. Um, in terms of the new guys coming out of Detroit at the moment, there's you know a young guy called Carl Hall, who's um, I think he's got a release coming out on Hyperdub quite soon actually. Um, he's doing some amazing stuff at the moment, so you should certainly uh, check out what he's doing at the moment. Um, in terms of what I'm buying right now. Um, I'll play one track which um, is a favourite of mine at the moment um, Desire is on a a record label called um, Italians Do It Better Um, and I just just like the vibe of of, of what they're doing right now Um, produced by a guy called Johnny Jewel um, who's doing some amazing stuff at the moment Myself now, but my 
Yeah, that's uh, a track by um, a Desire um, on Italians Do It Better, which I'm really liking at the moment. And I'm just going to finish off with um, a track which is not just a favourite of mine, but a favourite of all the artists and work that I've that I talked to. Um, uh, this is Body Cure.
it's almost time for us to go and uh, it was a very awesome show I really enjoyed it and uh, I hope you did as well all uh, this show will be archived uh, next week on www.hepcatradio.net as well as www.samurai.fm slash hepcatradio as well as the show from a few weeks ago with Hudson Mohawk and James Pants. Thank you very much, actress, for coming. It was really a pleasure and honor having you here. Uh, thanks, Mami, for having me. Uh, thanks for everyone who's uh, been sending messages and stuff. And, uh, yeah, just look out for what we're doing and uh, hopefully we can, you know, give you music which you, you um, really like. And that's, that's about it, really. And uh, you're going to play the last track, right? Yeah, I'm going to play one more track, um, which is by... Um, I do it in the Crown Loot Kids and uh, it's called Makes. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye.